guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I just want to say that God is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. And we have his resurrection power. So I don't know how you came tonight. Maybe you were sick. Maybe you are dealing with um, trials or tribulations. Maybe you got a bad report from the doctor. So I'm going to believe that tonight it's a night mark by heaven. I'm going to believe that tonight our thoughts... I'm going to continue on thinkers. My husband has been preaching a great message, and, and uh, he suggested I, I should continue. Um, so I was like, it would be good to, to, to go on thinkers. And as I was thinking that, the Lord says that he wants to upgrade our thinking. He wants to, to view life according to his purpose, according to his word. He wants us to receive every promise. He wants us to receive his wholeness, his healing. And I believe that tonight, God is going to open our eyes of understanding. Paul uh, prayed this. This is what Paul said. I didn't give this scripture, but it's in Ephesians 1.8. And I feel that God wants you to know this. This is what Paul says. May the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saint. As I was studying today for my message, uh, I was thinking I have been saved. This December will be 21 years. I finally, I'm finally maturing. 21 years. And I was thinking about our lives and our thoughts and, uh, and what we believe about God. And as I was meditating and thinking, I thought, every year we preach about the renewing of the mind, right? We preach about uh, casting our cares upon the Lord because he cares. And, and I was going through everything that we know of God, but many times because we haven't upgraded our thinking, we're still living the same way. I always share that my life in Christ has taken, I was a little bit slower in my growth with God. No, because God doesn't want to grow us. No, because God cannot, doesn't have the power to change me. No, it's because I wouldn't give him permission to change me. And I believe that he's asking us tonight if we have the courage to think, to think a new thought, to think and view life the way that he sees it. You know, I love uh, Joyce Meyer, right? We, we read, I, I read the book, like, uh, The Battlefield of the Mind, right? And we're just calling it thinkers because we want to be creative, Right? Creative, and how do we renew our mind? How do we change the way that I live life? How do I walk in victory? How do I do that? And the enemy knows that if he has our thoughts, he has us. The Bible says that with, with God, it says that with our mind, it means with our thoughts, we serve God. Did you know that? I mean, that's what the Bible says. It says, with your mind, we serve the Lord. And I was like, oh. so it's not with, uh, because I'm a greeter or because I'm a pastor, because I preach. That's not how I serve God. The way you and I serve God is in what we think. What's going on here? What's in the battlefield? What is it that the enemy comes to steal? He comes. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to kill every dream that God has given us. He wants to steal our peace. I bet you if, if we were honest, um, I would say that a lot of us here tonight, we deal with the same thing over and over. It's like a cycle in our lives. There is an area that the enemy knows. See, the enemy knows how we think. Not because he can read our minds. It's because he knows that we're going to act out on what we believe. Right? 
He knows, he knows how to put fear in our lives. He knows how to make us believe that what God says is not what he said it was, it was going to happen. He makes us to think that God hasn't, hasn't, hasn't agreed with what you're believing. He makes us to think that God is not going to heal you, that God is not going to deliver you, that God is not going to change your situation. That's what he wants us to believe. And all of us here have an area. Think about an area of your life that you haven't been thinking what's an area of your life that constantly comes back and recycles in your life what's a fear that the enemy has has given you or told you a lie and that lie has become your truth and you know how lies become truth is because we give them life you and I give them life I mean if you come every Wednesday and when I preach I always say that I always thought that I wasn't creative right I always thought that I you know creative people are like the artsy people right it's people that uh that do uh painting so people that are you know they do graphics and I'm thinking you know I'm, I have nothing I have no creativity but see, the creativity that God wants from you and I is not creative. It's not, I'm not talking about a, about a gift that God gave you that you are an artist. I'm talking about the creativity of your words, of your thoughts. Well, you and I are able to create our world. And I thought, what have I created in my mind? What have I been thinking lately that has me bound? Because that's what the enemy wants. He wants to bound us. He wants to, uh, he wants to have all this creativity. And I suggest you, like I always give homework. And I don't know if I already gave it, but people don't do homework. Only two people do homework. They always come to me, I did the homework. I'm like, yes, one person. One person did the homework. But if we're going to become thinkers and aware of what's going on here, and when we're going to allow God. And this year, he said, and I'm always speaking whatever God says because he speaks to his church every single day. He speaks and he said this year that this is, was the year, he says, this is the year of victory for my children. But do you still believe that this is the year of victory? Has your mind changed because of your situation, because it has been hard, because you haven't seen change? Hey, we're already like, I was telling God, hey, you said that this was your victory, but come on, we're already made. When am I going to see something, you know? When am I going to see a little cloud? When am I going to see? You know what the Lord told me? He says, see, that's the problem because you're still looking to see it in the natural if we're still seeking for, for, for things of the world, for, what's the world? The world wants, wants proof. And we tend to create. I'm going to tell you how creative you can be. Every thought in your head becomes a story. Did you know that? Okay, so this is the story. I'm going to tell you a story. How I, You're going to be at the, at the end of the service, you're going to be like, Pastor, you're, you're super creative. You're like... You should be writing books. I think I will be good friends with Steven Spielberg. Who, who drives, who, who writes uh, movies about drama? Anyone here? You know, drama, let's say. I will be, I will be good. I have so many, so many stories. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a story. This is how easy we create in our mind. So let's say someone texts you, right? Or you text someone, right? Because now we text, we don't call, we text, right? So we text, so I text my friend. And I say, hi, friend, thinking of you, uh, hoping to get together, and, uh, and I want to hear from you, how's life? And then I send her a text. And then my friend didn't answer. She did not reply. So within an hour, I check my text, but she has not replied. Hmm. A thought comes. Hmm. Maybe she's mad at me. Right? So I'm already creating a story. A storyboard. Then another hour passes by. 
And I'm like, no, she's never, she has never not texted me within two hours. This is, no, this is not her. Maybe she's dying. It has to be something that's happening to her. But then I go on Facebook and she's posting. Right? She's posting. So I'm thinking, constantly thinking. Well, she is on Facebook. She's commenting on everybody's business. And he says it's from her iPhone. Why is she not texting me back? No, now I know definitely she's mad at me. And now I'm going to thinking, what did I do? What did I do to cause her to be upset at me? What did I do? And then after that, I go like, no, what did I do? Because now it's three hours, a whole day. And I'm the next day, it's like, you know what? What did she do? And she calls herself my BFF, but she didn't respond to me. And I go on Facebook, and there she is. Good morning. Well, <laughs> you see, you see, a thought created a story. A thought. I just thought one thing. I thought she probably is mad at me. If I had just let it there, it would, it would have been fine. But see, the Bible says, and I love what my husband read, in a, in, and I love we're going to read the scripture, with, uh, Ephesians 4.8, where it says, finally, brothers and sisters, I'm adding the sisters so we don't feel left out. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, is there any virtue, is there any praise? Think. It says think. You know, we, we always think about meditating, right? Like it's at the, this is the King James. So King James says think on these things. Think on these things. So I go back to the same story. Why didn't I think something noble about her? Why didn't I think something good? So, no, maybe, you know what, she's busy. And who am I to judge her while she's on Facebook, right? Because, see, you're, we, already, we already create with our thinking, we create cases. Do you know how many cases do you have in the vault of your head? How many cases have you started against people because it was a thought that gave you an idea and that idea became a story and then all of a sudden you will never no, I would say you will never, unless you're really mature, you will go to that person and say, hey, you know what? I texted you. How come you didn't respond? We don't do that. We don't do that. And I believe that God wants you to know that you are thinkers. We were created in the image, in the likeness of God, and we can create something wonderful about what we are going through. Today, I was feeling very well, but today I said, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for where I'm at in life today. Am I at a good place? No, I wasn't in a good place. But I said, I thank you. I need to change the way that I see my situation. I need to think the thoughts that God wants me to think about my life. It's time for us to become, and I know that this is the desire of the Father, that we know who we are in God, that we know that you and I have the power to create, you and I have the power to prophesy, you and I have the power to change, to change. And then we come into another problem. I love to quote Romans 12 too. Can we go to Romans 12 too? You guys don't know, but I have a tattoo in my back, and it's Romans 12, 9. No, just kidding. That's how much I know this, this verse. It's actually tattooed in my head, but is it tattooed in my heart? Is it connected to my heart? This is what it says. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It says, do not be conformed. Do not be conformed. But it says, but be transformed by the renewing of your thoughts. Another translation says, but be transformed by the way you think. 
And this is what the Lord told me. I'm, gonna, I'm telling on me. I said, Lord, I, I brought a situation to him, right? Isn't it awesome when you bring a situation, you, bring, uh, you actually bring in a complaint to God, right? So I brought the situation to God, and, and I brought it, and I was like, with a renewed mind, Lord, this is what I think about the situation. What do you think? And it had to do with thoughts, and it had to do uh, with perception. And you know what the Lord said to me? She said, Virginia, you are so concerned about stewarding somebody else's thoughts. You are so concerned about you trying to change their mind. God didn't say, he didn't say, be good stewards, help your brother and sister to change the way that they think. He says, no, you change the way that you think. You do. And many times we don't grasp, and this is, has been me, I haven't grasped many of the promises of God because I'm still being defined what, what happened to me years ago or what someone said about me years ago. And I took that word, I took that, whatever they decided to say about me, I took it and my life came from that place. Growing up, um, people are brutal, huh? Kids are brutal, your family's brutal. I had one of those families that they always tell you something. They always want to tell you what they think, but it's never good. Never. Never a congratulations. Never, never you did a good job. No, they just want to help you get better. Right? So when I was growing up, um, the word that they used for me was, you're useless, Virginia. I think about Nacho Libre. You're useless, Ignacio. <laughs> That's why I love Nacho Libre. I'm like, that was me. And that was the priest telling him that. But it was said over and over and over and over in my life. And so that thought. That thought without me knowing became a reality in my life because I always felt like I was useless. When I came to God, I had to renew my mind, believing that God has something for me, that he had given me something because I didn't feel smart. I didn't feel like I can do things. I didn't feel capable of nothing. Because without knowing that thought, that thought, what are thoughts? Words. That person said, you're useless. And so my life started with that cycle. You're useless. You're useless. You're useless. You're useless. And without knowing, many times we're still being renewed. We're still being changed, but you have allowed that word to still define you. And then you start to, you start to want to perform because, hey, I want to be used. And I would tell God, Lord, I want to be used. I want you to use me. And when he would ask me to be used, I don't like what you want me to do. Have you ever prayed to God, God, use me? Because they told me that I was useless, but every time God would ask me to to do something, okay, I'm going to use you. Can you do this for me? No, Lord. No. Let me tell you my comfort. When I'm asking you to use me, I want you to use me in music. I want you to use me in song. I'm just teasing you. But I wanted to do something like it was easy for me. And I remember when I asked the Lord, Lord, I need you to change me. I'm giving you permission, and I'm going to let go of that word useless. And I want you to use me, and whatever you tell me, I'm going to do it. And he says, whatever. Yes, be careful what you ask God. You know what he told me that year? He says, I want you to forgive so and so. And there were so many so's. That's not, that's not the way I want to be used, Lord. I don't want to be used. 
that way. And the Lord says, no, you have to stop thinking that if you want to be used, let God use you. Because if God is going to use you, it's for your own good. God will never ask us to do something that is not the best for us. And I remember praying to God and, and, and asking God. And I would say, okay, Lord, today I woke up that morning and say, I forgive. And it was like 10 people. This was like 15 years ago. Or was it 15 days ago? No, it's 15 years ago. And every day I had to wake up every morning and say, Lord, you're going to use me today. And today I choose to think that I am capable of forgiving. I am capable because you forgave me. I am capable of loving these people because you first loved me. So I am capable of loving. I am capable of forgiving. I am capable of doing great things for you. I am capable of obeying you because you have placed everything in me to succeed. And every day I would say that and say it and say it and say it. And every day when I would see these people, ugh, before the Lord, I never forgave people. If, they, if someone did me wrong before Jesus Christ, you were out. Out of my life, even if you hurt me, you were out and out and out. And now God is asking me, yes, renew my mind, and I'm allowing God to change my thinking. I'm, I'm actually taking his thoughts and putting them as my thoughts. If God can forgive, then I can forgive because I was made in his likeness. If God can love, then I can love. So I had to say it over and over and over and over again. But then I wanted to feel it, right? Because you want to feel like, I want to feel that I, I forgave that person. So every morning I will, I will say it. I will confess it. I will believe it. I will claim it. And then I will go out and see this person. And I feel like, nope, I haven't forgiven her. Or I haven't forgiven him. I still want like in my mind, pew, 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 pew. You know what I mean, right? I still want to like, oh. I see them. I just want to do this. And then the Lord said to me, you're going to change the way that you think. You're going to surrender every single day. I want you to surrender your thought. And you're going to start thinking good things. You're going to speak to yourself and you're going to think good things about this person. You're going to say good things about this person. You're going to say how I feel about that person. And you're going to say how I feel about you. And you're going to confess and you're going to believe that you are so capable of forgiving. And it didn't take long. Well, it was a little bit long, but no, because God wasn't able to do it. It's because I was really like, I don't know if I'm ready. But then I remember one day I woke up, I saw this person that I hated with the passion. If I was passionate, I was like, it was to hate. Not to give life, but it was to hate people. But outside, I look so awesome. Like, I, I'll tell you, you would have never think that I was a hater. Because you see, no one can see what you think, but God already knows. And when I think about my life now, and I'm like, God chose you before the foundation of the earth, and he knew every thought that you were going to have, and he still chose you. He knows your, your beginning till you end. She, he knows where you are in life. He knows your biggest mistake. He knows your biggest, your biggest failures. He knows everything about you, and yet he cannot think a bad thought about you. So I remember... Waking up one morning, and I saw this person, and for the first time in my life, I was able to feel finally my thinking, my renewing. It's, it's a constant renewal. It's a constant transformation of the way that we think. And finally, one day, I saw this person coming out, and I felt this love that I think she was shocked because for months and for years, I wouldn't. And this is the, where my parents here? Is this not being recorded? You can't see. We can delete this part. This person, 
very closely. And for I came to the Lord, and I refused to let go. I refused to change my thinking about what they have done, what they have said about me. But then I agree with the word of God, and I chose to be a thinker, not a thinker of what I think and my opinion and what someone said. No, I chose to believe what God says, and we need to choose to believe what God thinks of you and what God thinks of that person. He's never going to agree with you. And, and that moment, I remember when I woke up and I saw her, and I hadn't talked to her like three years, and I've been a Christian for three years then. I was serving God. I was teaching Bible school, I mean, the children. I was quoting scripture. But I wouldn't change the way that I thought about that person. And then after three years, so mind you, this person knows that I'm a Christian now. And I would still go to their house, and I wouldn't greet them. But I'm the Christian, and here, by the way, come to my church. And I told my husband, you cannot invite family members to our church. I don't want them there. That is my haven. That is my safety. And I cannot see them there. That's what I used to think. And then when I came, after three years, this person, like, mind you, right? So I haven't talked to her. Like, I see her, you know. And I wanted to make sure, like, I'm a Christian, but I want you to make sure that you did me wrong, and I want you to know it. Have you ever done that? You did me wrong, and I want you to know it, right? And so that morning, I saw this person, and when I saw this person, she was shocked. I ran to her, and I hugged her, and she was like, I think she even got pale, I hugged her and I said, I, I looked at this person and said, I love you. And she was like, I love you. And I want you to know about Jesus. <laughs> After three years, right? And I haven't ignored her. Three years. But she was so shocked that that day I repented not only to God, I repented to this person because of all of my stories that I had created in my mind. And then this person came to the Lord that day. That day. And to this day, that person is super close to me. And I thought that Lord said to me, see, you see, that's the same thing that we need to do in every area of our lives. What is it? What thought is it that is robbing you against the promises of God? What is it that the enemy is coming and lying to you and putting fear in your life that, hey, if I forgive again, you know what? They're going to do it again, and I don't want them to do it again. That's not our job. God wants you to believe. The devil is a liar. He is a liar. He is a liar, and his pants are on fire. They will be. You, you get it? Hell? Fire? Lake? Lake? If you have to explain your joke, it's not a joke. But I believe that we need to have the courage to think God's way. You know that the finances is not your problem? You know that the career is not your problem? Do you know that even your family or your marriage or whatever it is, you know that that's not really your problem? Your problem is what we think about that problem. It's what I think about my finances, what I think about my spouse, what I think about my family. That's the problem. But we get so fixated on the people. We get fixated on the outward things. God says, no, I want you to fix yourself, your mind, your eyes. I want you to think thoughts that are in heaven. Fix your thoughts. Fix your thoughts on things that are above. That's what the Bible says. Fix your thought. Do you know how hard it is to fix your thought when you're already fixated on something? When all your life this is the way you have believed? And as I said, the devil doesn't read minds. He can't. He can't. Do you know that the devil cannot read your mind? He cannot read your mind because he is not, he doesn't know it all. 
God knows your mind. God knows our thoughts. So when I think about like if you if we do our homework and tomorrow you think and write down every thought that comes to your head, we should do that. I mean every thought. Every thought that comes, write it down and see where is your mind? Where are your thoughts? What are they doing? Why are they creating? Are they creating a reality? Are they creating a worse reality? Write down every thought and every vain imagination. Write, write it down. Write it down. And you make yourself think. We can make ourselves think. I want to make myself think good thoughts. I want to make myself believe that I have the best outcome. Why is it that we cannot think a good outcome of our circumstances? If the enemy will tell you, like, there's people right now that, that we are so bombarded in our mind, the things that have never happened in our lives, but we think that they will happen. Because the enemy is coming, the thief is coming to steal your peace, your joy, and the enemy is coming. And it's not even that something that is, has taken place, but the enemy can tell you, hey, if your mom had cancer, you're going to get cancer too. And we live in that place. If your mom died of breast cancer, like, okay, you're also going to die of breast cancer. And your children are going to die of breast cancer. And then you go to the doctors and then you feel like, oh, my gosh, you already declare, you already made a whole story of what the doctor is going to say. No, I won't even go because I already know what the doctor is going to say. Can you read minds? Can we read minds? But we are good mind readers. No, God didn't say, I want you to read your mind. I, I want you to be reading people's mind. He says, you change your mind. You renew your thoughts. You do it. The enemy comes and he wants to steal the promises that God has spoken about your life. What is a promise that God has told you? If God told you that your family will be restored, then your family is restored. No, Lord, but you don't understand. They're getting worse. If God told you that your family is going to be restored, then they will be restored. And we need to will it. We need to think it. We need to say it. We need to believe it. Think about I, I love I love David. Read Psalms. And David says, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. He says it over and over. Go Google it. And it says, when, how many times David said, I will bless the Lord. See, if the enemy knows that no matter what we go through and we say, you know what, I, I, I'm, I'm getting a new, a new thought. My new thought is that in whether I'm going on my highest high or my lowest low, I will bless my Lord. I will bless my Lord. I will forgive. I will give life. I will not allow the enemy to stop me. And I will not allow the enemy to come and steal any more from my own mind. This is the battlefield. You know how many people were taken out, like, prematurely? In the Bible, when you read stories. When I read about Moses, he was taken out. Not because God didn't want him to cross the other to the promised land. It's because Moses was so frustrated with the outside, with the people. I mean, and you read it, and my gosh, the Israelites, like, oh, they were like people, like, how can you lead people like that? But God will never call Moses to lead them if he didn't have what he needed to lead them out. There is great power in what we think. You know, I've always been very, um, I was always very uh, proud that I always thought, you know what, I am very good. I always watch what I say. Not always, but you know, most of the time, right? Always watch what I say. And I felt great about it. Like, you know, I'm doing good. I never, I never speak out of turn or whatever. I don't say things that, I, I'm, I'm not going to speak negative. 
And the Lord said to me one time, Regina, you're not speaking negative, but you're thinking it 24-7. How's that working for you? Lord, but at least I don't say it. Give me some brownie points here. No, it's here. It's here whether you say it or not. When you say it, you just give it more power. But, hey, thoughts are powerful. Thoughts make words. It's a word equal a thought. Have you heard that term? Be careful what you, it says, uh, be careful what you think because your thinking becomes your words. We need to watch out what we're thinking. What are we thinking? What are we creating? Do not let the enemy take you out prematurely where you belong. Do not let the enemy steal your promised land because you thought yourself incapable of standing and believing. Think about the a prophet that what's taken now with fear. The enemy came and he told the prophet Elisha, you know what, that, that Jezebel, she's going to do this to you. Think about it. The enemy just came with the threat. This is what she's going to do. She never even touched them. But he, will, he ran away from his calling. He said that he was suicidal. He was like, I can't do this anymore. And God said, well, if you don't think you can do it, then you won't. We are what we think. You heard? We are what we eat. I'm a burrito. <laughs> like, no. It should be a carrot, you know, something good. I was like, we're not better than our thoughts. And I believe that that's what God is telling us today, to, to change the way that we think. Change the way that you think. A thought, it's powerful. If thoughts are so powerful, if negative thoughts are so powerful, can you imagine when we, when we swap our, our thinking, when we swap it with what God says? If someone is able to bring you down because of what they think about you, can you imagine when we think about what God thinks about you? And he thinks that you're capable. He thinks that you are amazing. He thinks that you are, you are actually the apple of his eyes. He loves you. He believes in you more than you believe in you. He believes in you. Let me give you my last scripture. I have so many, I don't know which one to pick. Yeah, I'm going to give you this. Genesis 15, 5 and 6 says this. The Lord took Abram outside and said, look up, look up at the sky, count the stars if you can. Then he said to him, that's how many children will be born into your family. Abram believed the Lord. The Lord was pleased with Abram because he believed. So Abram's faith made him right with the Lord. And I believe that this is what God is asking you today. Are you, do you have the courage to believe beyond your moment today? God was talking to an old man. He says, Abraham, I want you to go outside. Go outside out of your circumstances. I want you to step out right now. Yes, I know that you're old. Yes, I know that you're, nothing is working. Your wife is old. She's rusty. And you're musty. But I want you to believe. I want you to think beyond who you are right now. I want you to think beyond the fact that you're old. And I want you to go outside. And I want you to look up. And I want you to see the stars. And I want you to see that. Can you count them, Abraham? Well, his name was Abraham then. I want God to change my name. That's when God changed his name. He says, can you see? Can you see beyond your infertility? Can you see beyond your age? Can you see beyond that there is nothing working out here? It's not going to work. We, my wife, actually, she was never fertile. And the Lord says, I want you to go out outside of your circumstances, and I want you to look up. And 
for you to look how and can you see can you see and god is asking you today can you see beyond your facts right now what is it what are the facts that are speaking so louder in your life and you said no there is no way there's too many facts there is too too many facts that reality is that I am a mess, that reality is that I'm broken, that reality is that I'm sick, that reality is that, that we, whatever it is, what's your reality? And God is saying, you can you step away from your reality and you can come out of there and can, are you still able to see beyond your reality? If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.